everyone hope you're all doing well staying cozy hope you all enjoyed your holidays uh with your family or alone I'm totally fine uh drinking some hot cocoa um we're now in 2024 we're going to talk about 2023 a little bit um there are already i'm already doing a best of animation list that i'm working on already for like some animated series so i decided to not do any of those uh for this particular list because i like other things so various like movies music um anime that's new to me but old and uh etc will be on this uh best of list of 2023 but i thought why not share um 2023 list with um, friends you've seen a couple times before we got uh both the joshes on here Hello, hello, hello. Oh, in sync. Yes. Wow. Well done. You guys were on top of it. Uh, so how this is going to work is we are each going to go through our, we have a top 10 list. We're each going to go through our number 10, then each our number nine and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, until we go to number one. Uh, and the, the rules were just uh, anything in the medium or like if someone had like a hobby that like really stuck with this with uh, 2023 specifically, it's it's pretty fair game. Um, it's just uh, media to me because I don't have any other hobbies. Um, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see because I think because it's so broad, we're going to have like a, a wide list of various things there's only like maybe maybe a few similarities so i'm I'm excited about it and uh josh man why don't you start off what is your number 10 favorite thing of 2023 so there's a lot of great things this year i think we can all we can all agree and uh i really tried to keep this list like pretty much all things all my, all my lists are pretty much things that did come out in 2023 um, that aren't, you know, just new to me um, because there was so many great things. You know what I mean? It was it was kind of right. easy to pick from. So my number 10 pick is a movie, um, a movie that I'm not sure if uh, the other Josh is is, is going to chime in. Maybe he saw this. I, I don't think you saw this yet. I could be wrong about that, but it is going to be Godzilla minus one. Yeah, um, I haven't seen, seen it. What would you say, Josh? seen it no you you've not seen it nope oh wow well i would definitely recommend both you guys to to see it at some point because this movie this movie is important and Mm. it's important for for a bunch of reasons but i would say i wish the only thing i wish about this movie is that i didn't go in expecting the hype i i think if i went in not sure what to expect and then I got the experience I I got. I think this movie would like absolutely have you know blown my mind. It's just people hyped it up quite a bit. So like I, I kind of went in with already like thinking it was gonna at least be really good. You know what I mean? That said, I still think this movie is absolutely fantastic. I think it's probably the best licensed like character slash like using another like well established you know world and and brand like story that i've seen this year specifically but like even like you know many years you know uh for, for the past couple of years like this is this is one that definitely sticks out um i just think what makes it really good is that as great as godzilla is in it and as as great as and fun as as, as that is and you know all of the the classic godzilla stuff what's really cool is that it's a human story um and it's about characters that you're actually gonna like um I think the Godzilla movies kind of get bogged down by a lot of like the government military talk and they, they, they kind of become like too large scale that it's kind of hard to, re- you know, relate to anybody. Right. But in this story specifically, they really chose a centered character to be the focus point And then the, the, the few characters around him as, as the supporting cast just perfectly balance everything out. And I think what it has to say about purpose and, and just kind of finding, you know, finding one's um you know center in life and and what they you know are ultimately um you know able to able to find you know through through life experience and just you know 
pain and, and trauma and all these things. I think I think it's really important. Um, I think uh, I think it makes perfect sense why a lot of people that saw this movie cried. Um, I, I I think it is a, a really emotional movie. There's one thing about the ending, which I, I'm, I'm not going to spoil or anything, but there's one thing about the ending that is a little cheesy. Um, but aside from that, I do. I just think it's just an extremely well done film. And the fact that we have movies like this that are able to use, you know, the, the Godzilla brand and stuff and be these like really creative, extremely personal stories. Um, it has just been a really inspiring note um, for me and, and, and really kind of gives me faith in, in, you know, maybe other brands and, and, and stuff being able to to uh, approach, you know, these these more larger scaled things um, in a more intimate way, like like Godzilla minus one did. Um, I definitely recommend anyone to, to, to check it out. Uh, I think it's an easy crowd pleaser. I think you can watch this with pretty much anybody and have a good time because you do have this, the, the spectacle. You have the the great, you know, destroying Godzilla scenes. And, you know, Godzilla is just so cool in this. He's a perfect combination between vicious, but also, you know, there's a sense of like real terror to him. There's, you know, but but he's still cool. You know, he's, it's not just like, you know, try, like uh, Shin Godzilla, the movie before it, kind of leans into like a tragic angle for Godzilla. This isn't necessarily a tragic Godzilla. This is just a angry Godzilla that just wants to fuck shit up. So, you know, in, in, in that regard, I think uh I think they definitely do something really, really fun and interesting with, with Godzilla specifically. And yeah, it's just it's built into a great indie type, you know, family drama too. So I uh I couldn't couldn't recommend it uh you know enough. And I think uh, anyone that hasn't seen it, definitely give it a give it a shot. Nice. Now, would you say, Josh, would you say you like it more than Shin Godzilla? Like, would you say this is your favorite Godzilla movie minus the like, so, film, of course? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I think it's definitely difficult right now. I will say there's been enough time for the initial hype of, of coming out of the theater to kind of dissipate a little bit enough for me to still think Shin Godzilla is better. I just think Shin Godzilla is is... It just hits emotionally for me. Like I didn't really cry during Godzilla minus one. Yeah. Um, you know, other people that that you know saw it before me and after me have definitely have. So like I do believe it can you know get that kind of emotion. But Shin Godzilla got Shin Godzilla got me like really feeling something. So I do think it, Shin Godzilla might be my favorite. But I will say that this is not far behind. And I do believe it's such a unique film from Shin Godzilla that it's just going to be preference at that point. Gotcha. Okay, cool. All right, Josh Eby, what is your number 10 favorite thing of 2023? All right, similar to Josh, man, I decided I wanted the majority of my picks to come from this year, but I am going to throw in two honorable mentions. My number nine and my number 10 are both old things that I experienced for the first time this year. And so my number 10 is the original Halloween movie. I watched that for the first time this year. Genre-defining movie, right? It's amazing that I've never seen it before, but I loved it. The soundtrack creates suspense. Wes Craven's directing just creates something that we see inspires horror movies literally to this day. And for it to still hold up well over 50 years later, I think is impressive and a testament to what a good movie it is. And the acting is okay. You know, it's pretty easy to act in a horror movie. I couldn't do it. You know, I'm not the greatest actor. However, you know, I think out of the genres. But to take this plot, which at its base point is pretty simple, and stretch it out to create this full movie, like I said, that defines a genre of slasher films. You know, Halloween's not the first slasher film, as we know, but it's the first one that I would say sort of went mainstream and created this new type of suspense movie. And so I just loved it. That was my, um, I don't know, my wife doesn't really like horror movies. So while she was gone one night, I was like, what do I want to watch? I just toss it on and just had such a fun time with my popcorn. So that's uh, an honorable mention, number 10 for me. Awesome. Okay. My number 10 is... The Chainsaw Man manga. So, I've been slowly getting into manga 
for the first time this year. So I guess you could put just manga in general, but, and there were a couple, like, I was really thinking about putting it on here. Like, don't call it mystery. I really liked a lot. Um, there's still some others I'm thinking about, but I think I've enjoyed since I'm just about caught up. I think I only have like two or three volumes left to catch up. Um, I've just really enjoyed my time. Um, it was like the perfect, like watching, um, as I'm going to like a convention, like I watched it a lot or I read it a lot on flights. Um, and I, I think even though I, I probably think some of the other manga I've read are probably better than Chainsaw Man. Um, what I've enjoyed about like the manga more and excited to see more what the the anime is going to do differently is like just the the way it balances it's like really dark uh themes of like a lot a lot what um it's tackling like with um you know control and like what's going on in the the world and um how that reflects like a lot of the demons and a lot of the while having like this like really dope action scenes while also having like really great like my probably my one of my favorite parts are two of being like the slice of life moments where we kind of just get time to know the characters and it it doesn't need action to to show that we don't need exposition to like it just sits on certain scenes a lot so i really appreciate chainsaw man uh doing that um but also the comedy i just think it's really funny there was this one scene um that it wouldn't really be funny if i explained it um but there there was this one panel i read where in the the airport for like 10 minutes I was just holding in my laughter. Like I was really trying not to like laugh out loud because there were people next to me and it was really difficult. Like there was this one uh, scene that that happened that will probably happen in uh, the, the upcoming movie because that's because it happens during the, the bomb girl arc. If you know, you know, but uh, yeah, it was just a really, really fun read. Um, So yeah, I had to give it to, to that. But all right, moving back to Josh Mann. What is your number ninth favorite thing of 2023? So my number nine favorite thing is going to be the Daniel Caesar album. So the thing with Daniel Caesar is um, I've always been a fan. Um, I've, I've always kind of checked out his stuff. Um, I've just loved his voice, uh, you know, and, and his songwriting and all that. This album has two songs that I would genuinely say are song of the year contender for me. Um, And that's Do You Like Me and Cole, which go back to back on the album. And I will say that the first time I've listened, I listened to this album and those two songs played back to back. I was in a state of bliss that has not been mimicked throughout the rest of the year. It was, it was such a like, crazy almost like spiritual uh experience for me on on just a level of enjoyment and and just immersion that i was felt inside the music um and then just the rest of the album is just really freaking solid i don't really think there's any misses um there's like maybe one song that like i don't play all the time but like uh which (laughs) is called um homosexual um i'm not gonna get too far into that it's just not a great song to me but everything else is just really really good um i think for people that really like a uh, r&b that has like a moodiness aesthetic to it um like if you you know if, if, if you guys are a, a big frank ocean fan or you know in in that vein of of art like the type of r&b you like this is what i would definitely say is like the band-aid to like a frank ocean album like it just it covers that itch and um honestly like it's probably going to be at least on par, if not better than the, the next Frank Ocean album, if we ever do even get one. So I think that uh, this just kind of hit for me the way I needed it to. And like I said, two songs off of it that are absolutely song of the year contenders for me. And I mean, it's already crazy to have 
one song off an album that 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 that's that list because I do listen to a lot of music. I, at least I try to. Um, so the fact that there's two and they're right back to back, it had to at least secure my number nine spot. So that is Daniel Caesar's Never Enough. Nice. Josh Eby, what is your number nine favorite thing of 2023? All right. My number nine is the only other thing on my list that didn't come out this year. And I'll be honest, it could be one or two or three if it came out this year, because this is one of the most beautiful pieces of media I've seen in my life. And that sounds like an exaggeration, but it's Jack Stauber's Opal. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. It's a short film. Yes, It is beautiful. Okay. It's claymation as well as some live action shots. I'm a big fan of David Lynch, and there's some Lynchian elements, I would say. I think it's the best thing this guy's ever made. Like I said, it deals with childhood trauma and child neglect in a very unique and clever way Um, at the start of the film. I'm not going to spoil any of it, but I didn't know where the ending was going to be. And when I saw the ending scene, it just hit and I was crushed. And the claymation is super fun to watch. Stauber is a musician as well. So there's a couple musical numbers throughout the film that really help set the tone and just paint each character that he introduces into the scene. And it's one of the most, uh, it's just heart wrenching, I would say, in a way that it's just sad that some kids really go through things this dark. You know, everyone has things from their past that are difficult to deal with, but to see it as a grown up, just looking on it and just know that there are kids going through neglect and abuse and things like that. And there's not much I can do about it um, other than just support people who I know are going through traumatic things in their life. But I think he does a good job of raising awareness and just letting people know that, you know, you're not alone and, a really dark and horrifying way, but I would recommend it to anyone. It's sad and it's dark, but just raising awareness that people are going through these things. And, you know, if you're out there going through something, you're not alone, but you've seen it, Josh, man. I have. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic pick. Let me say. Nice. Yeah. Great pick. Uh, My number nine, is Emma Ray's found baby. I, ah, my favorite, like, fun listen of 2023. Oh, we lost Josh Evie. Hopefully he'll come back. (laughs) Uh, But, yeah, I just really enjoyed uh, this album a lot. It's very, I I just appreciate how bold it is, being so, like, multi-genre of combining so many, having R&B and pop and uh, so many other different types of styles and taking some inspiration from um, so many various different things. And like the, the lyrics are just, I, I'm, I'm not the, the greatest at explaining like why I love like music and stuff, but like just the, the production and the, just the lyrics like were like just a lot of a lot of fun uh and yeah her her vocals are just absolutely incredible the way she's her different uh vocal tone she's able to to do just really like imp- impressive stuff like i've been continuously going back to this one l- listen by listen and uh you know if if she comes around my area might might see her in concert yeah uh, but Josh, man, kicking it back to you. What is yep. your eighth favorite thing of 2023? Well, I just want to say great pick. Um, that album is absolutely fantastic. I fully agree. So this is a, um, this is the album that I listened to, I'd say for the first time, like two, three weeks ago. Um, but ever since I listened to it, it has quickly gone up the ranks of just one of my favorite albums of the year um and after kind of sitting with it for a little bit i i have to have to give it up to 
number eight spot, which is Creeper's last album, Sangor Sangorver, um, or Sang Sang Sangivor, Sangivor, sorry, Sangivor. Um, so this is an album I brought to you, Quinn, uh, when we were kind of going through um what people were saying was their favorite albums, just kind of like, you know, just just having a conversation about that. And this was the one that I told you I was like, it was labeled as a dark opera rock. Not not opera, I, I should say a, a dark um rock theater. Uh that that would be more more appropriate. And I was like, man, or a, a metal uh rock opera kind of kind of vibe. So I heard that and I'm like, man, I have not listened to anything that kind of fits that vibe in a minute, but I'm a big fan. Um, and as soon as I listened to the first song, uh, I knew I knew this album was was going to be something special. So. Uh, Creeper, they kind of before this album were uh, I, you could definitely kind of consider them an emo band. They have a lot of very dark imagery. Um, and something that's cool about their style and their, um, their music is the main songwriter is he kind of started as a screenwriter. So he brings a level of storytelling to the albums that like are really, really interesting. And I think, um, really kind of give a layer and, and a character to them, especially when, when, when you dive into the music videos as well. But I would say before this biggest influence was definitely the misfits and and just kind of like you know that uh that air of 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 emo kind of kind of rock this is a way more cinematic uh piece compared to to what they've done in the past and it just has this really cool like almost phantom of the opera combined with yeah. like a little bit of of N sevenfold a little bit of you know like these these more dramatic elements to it um with within the rock and then classic rock on top of everything that just like it's just a perfect combination and i think that like the whole album from top to bottom is just filled with so many great melodies amazing guitar playing just really cool storytelling um it's the only, i'd say the only thing that makes me feel a little uh type of way is that it's, it's a very satanic album um like it it definitely is like there's definitely lines like having sex on on top of a burned church and stuff like that it's like you know it's a little it's a little much for for me personally but outside of that it's just such a fun enjoyable listen that i i kind of like overlook those elements and just enjoy it for what it is and you know, I, I obviously think it's kind of done in a, a tongue in cheek way, too. So I don't I don't think it's it's a satanic album, you know, in 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 like real spirit or anything. But like it, it, it definitely has that theme theming to it. But yeah, man, it's just a, it's a really, really, really good album. Um, I think it's extremely underrated on just kind of like, you know, talking to people and not really uh, hearing about it. Um, and I'm definitely glad that I checked out album of the year's website um, and uh, and saw it on the list because it, it quickly uh, rose up the, the list for me, for sure. Uh, Josh Eby, going back to you, uh, what is your uh, eighth favorite thing of 2023? Okay, my number eight of this year is a little movie called Theater Camp, which oh, came out no. back in July. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. I thought this was a very fun, goofy movie which at the same time made me feel very nostalgic for my times in high school and college theater. And um, it's a movie about members in a New York theater camp have to band together and raise money after their founder falls into a coma. And it's set as a mockumentary. And I found it just really funny making mm -hmm. fun of a whole bunch of stereotypes as well as just the drama community in general. I think Molly Gordon and Nick Lieberman did a great job writing and directing this movie, I think it could have easily fallen into the trap of taking itself too seriously, which yeah. it never does. It sort of knew what it was. And I thought the writing was good and the timing of the jokes for the most part was pretty good. I thought it dragged a little bit towards the second three quarters, mm. but I was having such a fun time watching this movie, which was about 90 minutes. So it wasn't too long that I didn't even mind it. So that was just such a thrill, I would say top things of 23 that definitely fit the bill 
Nice. Hell yeah. Yeah. yeah Theater Camp was a was a fun watch. I, I liked I liked that movie. My number eight favorite thing of 2023 was the final season of Reservation Dogs. Uh, I was a big fan of the show when it originally came out. Um, I think 2021, maybe. Um, I just like being able to because in season two, um, they pretty much wrap up the story there he set up in season one. So I think they took a take that I um, I think r- really worked of building like the quest for so long for these characters is to go to California um, not only just to to you know bury their friend who committed suicide if people uh, didn't know the plot of reservation dogs but also to they're kind of tired of being in this area they're they're in um, so they want to get get out but as the show goes along they the characters do build a community uh, with the the older generation and such and I like that we get to see the past of the uh, older characters and you know legacy being a important part of uh, this particular season and like I said taking the journey of like oh the characters are this is like their journey of like coming back and staying uh, in this like uh, small community um, and being able to tackle some pretty heavy themes. Um, there's some episodes that really, really hit you hard, but they have comedy to balance it out, um, which I just think was a, yeah, it was a really great show. Um, I really love the, the Ethan Hawke was in this uh, show uh, randomly. Like it was, it was pretty, it was pretty awesome. Uh, there's just like little cameos like that where they, you know, go go uh, above and beyond uh, the performance for a TV show, which, you know, I just really appreciate. And I uh, appreciate, um, oh, I'm blanking on the, I always, I always remember, remember his name, but I, well, honestly, the whole cast, crew, directors, I, I appreciate all of them for you know, getting to tell a story that's just not really told in uh, media of, yeah, and I just appreciate them giving me a little little history of the, of their world. Uh, so yeah, Final Season Reservation Dogs, uh, great show. I think uh, it's a little it's a little underrated. I think everyone should watch it. It's three seasons. It's on Hulu. Uh, if you if you just like FX shows, it's it's a it's one of the best, so yeah, keep, definitely yeah. give it a give it a watch. But uh, Josh, man, we're kicking it back to you. What is your number seven favorite thing of 2023? So this is one that's very important to me. Um, something that I don't feel like you guys are going to have because um, this was kind of a personal thing for me, um, and I just want to really get people to watch uh, the show. My number seven pick is going to be Warrior. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So. This show, I spent a lot of my time trying to watch things that other people recommend just because I don't like wasting wasting time. Mm. Um, I've my time has like really shrunk down to like what I'm able to do on a on a daily you know basis because I'm trying to do so many things. So it's very rare for me to just sit down and be like, I'm interested in this. No one's ever said anything about it. I haven't seen anyone really talk about this thing, but I'm interested enough to sit down and watch, right? I think those experiences are so special, especially in someone's life where you just kind of find something almost randomly and it just gives you such, it just gives you everything you could possibly want. The thing with Warrior, if you guys don't know, is it is based upon the... Um, never before done um, script slash storyboarding that Bruce Lee did before his death. And it's his most personal uh, story 
that really kind of dives into racism and specifically the Chinese immigration in early scale uh, America. And on top of that, it's this extremely fun, pulpy, martial art filled romp that has good levels of humor, uh, just fantastic uh, filmmaking. There's a lot of style and art to it. It's something that I, I really think has has got kind of lost in the shuffle of a lot of great shows. And, you know, there's there's a few shows that I left off the list because I knew that, um, you know, either Quinn or Josh might, might speak about them. And, you know, I, I just they didn't leave as much as an impact on me as Warrior did. Um, season three was this year. Uh, I caught the entire I watched the entire show this year, though. So from from season one to season three. I just think it got better and better. Season three ended on such a fantastic note. And just a little bit ago, we found out that it was canceled. Um, now it is the three seasons are going to be on Netflix. Um, if you if you guys haven't seen on HBO or uh, on Max, I would definitely recommend you guys to, to, to check it out um, if you haven't already. Um, and to really just try to give it maybe another shot at being picked up by Netflix because it's just a really special show. I think there's just a level of care and dedication that is, you know, kind of something that you don't get to see um, often enough because I feel like a lot of TV shows and movies and whatever, they kind of get bogged down in a lot of the behind the scenes drama and whatnot. And I think what's cool about this show is that it's made by such passionate people and just people that have such respect for of course, Bruce Lee and, and you know, everything he, he kind of brought to the table of, of the story he wanted to tell. But just a level of, you know, enjoyment of action film and, you know, just like the 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 storytelling that, that they really go into, which, you know, really does get heavy at points there. They do not pull punches when it comes to their conversations about racism and, you know, the, the levels of which, you know, uh, specifically how when the irish came to america just the mistreatment that was kind of done to them that you know instigated them to be you know ruthless back at at, at, at you know uh at, at other you know different ethnic uh ethnicity groups and and all this stuff and i just think it was done in a really skillful way i think the first shot of the show is so perfect in how it account like how it basically leads into everything else and i think as soon as you see that first shot you're going to know if it's if it's for you or not um and uh, yeah, if you guys stick with it, I just think you're going to really enjoy the characters. You're going to enjoy the writing. The action is fantastic. It only gets better each season. Um, and and yeah, I just just am very passionate about the show. And I, I really do hope it it gets to be picked up to 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 finish out what uh what story they were trying to tell. Absolutely, Josh Eby, what is your seventh favorite thing of 2023? All right, so my number seven is a bit of a normie pick, but I'll explain why. I really liked Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I think it's by far the best video game of the year. And it's for two reasons. The first is that Legend of Zelda is probably my favorite video game franchise. Has been ever since I first saw the beauty that is Ocarina of Time. And, you know, after Breath of the Wild came out in 2017, they've been hyping up this game for six years. And so the reason it's on the list, even though everybody loves the game, is for a game to be hyped up over six years and then still be phenomenal on its release and live up to all of that hype. The world was beautiful. The physics worked great. The game didn't break. And the lateral width of what you can do in this game is amazing. Just the fact that you can run around and goof off or follow a pretty serious quest to the end is impressive. And I just love the art style and the Koroks, these little leaf creatures and all the different weapons that you can build i thought it was a very well executed game and as someone who's a lifelong fan of legend of zelda i was just so grateful that it lived up to the hype heck yeah all right my number ninth is an oldie it did not come out in 2023 it came out actually a long time ago um that is the Tatami Galaxy. This is an anime that came out in 2010. Um, and what I really enjoyed about this was a show that I've tried to watch a couple of times, but I just never was in the mood. But 
randomly i don't remember when it was i just watched it and i've thought about it here and there since um it's just such a creative show that i really hope doesn't um people don't forget from the the test of time um like just the way like not only is like the the animation like gorgeous and does so many creative uses in like the animation the film the the direction itself but also taking um a concept of being like multiple you know we've seen it in everything everywhere all at once and we've seen marvel and superheroes do it all the time with these almost multiversity kind of kind of things but do it in a way of like the choices of like uh what would i do if i did this scenario and ultimately coming uh you know the main character coming to the conclusion he he does it was just yeah really really creative show um it's also pretty pretty funny as well um so yeah this is like one of like it's in the top five for me of my favorite anime i uh, just such a creative show that i've just been thinking about for for a while now like of the the many different themes of uh going through because you don't really see it this is this is an adult character too um in in college which is kind of an aspect you don't really see a lot of anime it's kind of usually either high schoolers or you get um an adult um but now a lot of times they're they're usually in an isekai as well so it's it's just a little rare to see adult characters a lot of the times in anime so i always want to champion uh one that has a character because adults like animation too so yeah, oh, yeah really really great watch um but josh man what is your sixth favorite thing of 2023 so something that was kind of hard for me to do this year because of again time management was was play video games um i moved and I, during my moving process my gaming pc was uh messed up um and is actually currently I uh, finally saved enough money to 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 go get it uh, repaired, so hoping for the best for that. But I wasn't really able to play too many games. Um, and then I got a PS5, and I I really enjoyed Spider-Man 2. Don't get me wrong. Uh, really enjoyed Spider-Man 2. I played God of War Ragnarok this year. Uh, really enjoyed that one. But the game that has stuck with me the most... Oh, and special, special shout-outs to, uh, to Midnight Suns. I... That 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 game has some of the best Marvel character writing that has been in any adaption ever. And even though there's some grown worthy, you know, worthy lines here and there, and the game's not exactly like a super polished experience the whole way, I really have to give shout outs to like that game specifically because I, I think it has some of the most interesting takes on Marvel characters in any adaption for the past 10 years like it, it it really is special um and i and i do think the game is is really fun too so i just want to give a shout out to that but my 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 actual pick is the resident evil 4 remake oh resident evil 4 is my second favorite game of all time um is right behind metal gear solid 3 snake eater as my favorite game of all time and it is a game that i've literally played through more than 20 times um I I'm I'm I absolutely grew up with the PS2 and Resident Evil 4 as a cornerstone of my game playing uh, during those times. So when the remakes of these Resident Evil started to happen, I think there was this hesitation of like, okay, are they actually going to do four? Because four already has a more modern aesthetic to it. It doesn't necessarily need a remake, in many many people's opinion, including my own. But I was cautiously optimistic, and when the trailers and started and stuff came out, I was like, "Okay, this is going to be kind of its own thing, but it's going to take elements from the original game and 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 you know do do something interesting with it." I was expecting it to be decent. I was really impressed. Um, I think Resident Evil Four Remake is the best Resident Evil game we've ever gotten. 
Um, and that comes from a lifelong Resident Evil fan. Um, I've literally played every every single game under the sun. And I just think Resident Evil 4 Remake just really knew what they were doing when it came to capturing the appeal of the original and not taking away some of the more cheesier uh, B-movie action uh, from that that original and then still giving it a modern twist. Now, I don't necessarily think every decision was you know, for the best um, when it comes to the transition, but I still believe that they did the best that they possibly could. And I think that when you remake a game that is literally one of the best games of all time, you were putting yourself in such uh, scrutiny for being able to fuck that up. And I think the fact that they nailed it out of the park, in my opinion, is is something that should be honestly studied and given all of its flowers to. I had such a blast of Resident Evil 4 Remake. Easily one of my favorite um, you know, experiences this year um, and just something that was really special for me. And kind of felt like a full circle moment in my life, you know, as a child playing the original Resident Evil 4 and now being a grown man and playing the playing the remake and, and seeing just the level of, of passion and care that they brought to it. It was it was a really beautiful moment. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if, if you guys haven't played Resident Evil 4 and you guys are a gamer, uh, gamers out there, I absolutely would uh, would recommend it over over the moon. Yeah, Josh Eby, what is your sixth favorite thing of 2023? All right, coming up next is Angel Face, the album by Steven Sanchez, my first music pick on the list. Mm. I think that this guy is bringing something, a new twist to the doo-wop genre of the 50s, just putting it in front of a modern audience in a way that I find really impressive. He takes sort of this, like I said, doo-wop style, old crooners of the 50s, but then blends it with a warmer, uh, more nasal tone, I guess I would say, to create this happier nostalgia. And I think that he's still looking for his niche a little bit. I wouldn't say it's a perfect album by any means, but (sighs) wouldn't say it's a perfect Sorry, am I cutting out? No, no, you're good. I'm good. All right, my mic just made a lot of noise. Sorry. Um, but I just really enjoyed it. And I think that I'm excited to see what he has to come as his first album. I think it's a really good shot. All right, sweet. My number six favorite thing of 2023 Uh is a person um it's a a youtuber uh called colleen's manga rex uh they i i got into them because i they kept kind of i the algorithm uh got me uh on this one and uh, i'll thank the algorithm but uh also leave me alone algorithm um of uh this youtuber that talks about uh shoujo and jose like manga sometimes anime too um i appreciate i appreciate them because they got me into not only some of like my favorite series of this this year that i've experienced for the first time that i'll kind of talk about uh later in a later pick but um they also got me into some other youtubers just from watching that like um anime teens and such uh and yeah, I just really like their their channel. I, I really like hearing their thoughts and uh, appreciate what they do for uh, the community because um, the anime and manga community is very uh, shonen and seinen focused. And, you know, I do like seinen. Uh, shonen, I could give or take uh, if you know my channel. Uh, but I, I just appreciate that they're talking about genres that just really aren't talked about very much in uh in the community so i wanted to give them at least a a shout out because i experienced their channel this year all right josh we are in the top five what is your fifth favorite thing of 2023 josh man all right um we're going back to music uh this was and I, I really tried to like make sure that there wasn't recency, recency bias with this one. Um, so I listened to it about three or four extra times after the first listen to really confirm if I felt 
the type of way I felt about it. And I absolutely do. It is Lana Del Rey's last album. Uh, um, uh, let me double check real quick. Something. Ray it's called Pick. like something on or... Yeah, uh, uh, something under Cashel uh, or uh, Hollywood Bullet. Or what the fuck is yeah. it called? <laughs> it's a long title. I remember that. Yeah, it's. Um, uh, did you know that there's. A, a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, very very long title. I, I apologize for, for not remembering that. But this album is just an absolute banger. Um, I am not the biggest Lana Del Rey fan, so it kind of takes something very special for me to like really connect with when it comes to her music. I've always loved the production. I've loved the instrumental palettes that she chooses. But sometimes vocally, I think she leaves a little bit uh, to be desired. I think, you know, sometimes her melodies aren't as, as sticky as I would like them to be. This album has none of those issues. Um, I think it's an easy 9 out of 10 for me. Uh, there's there's really nothing to say except for it is just an absolutely fantastic singer-songwriter pop album. Um, and I think the themes, the topics, the level of time that it has to dive into her personal life and still capture that aesthetic that, that Lana Del Rey is known for and really just do some interesting things when it comes to vocally, when it comes to songwriting choice wise, um, you know, take, take a song like uh, a, a W um, AKA American Horror. It's the levels of like the breakdown and just like what it does is so weird and interesting. Um, just a just like it always was was impressing me and surprising me and yeah i think um this is definitely my new favorite lana del rey album um i really did like norman fucking rockwell uh but this this is definitely my new favorite and i think what's really cool is like she didn't really hype this album up uh she just kind of let it speak for itself and i think that that was that was a really cool really cool moment so yeah, I I, uh, I definitely think this album is is well worthy of 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 this 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 higher spot for sure. Great pick, Josh. Big fan of that album. It didn't make my list, but I, I did really like that album. Uh, Josh Eb, what is your fifth favorite thing of two thousand twenty three? All right, next up we got a movie. I would say for me, number five is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Mm, great pick. And I saw this the week it came out in theaters. I was super excited. And what stood out to me the most, and the reason it's on this list, is the animation quality was phenomenal. Um, not necessarily my favorite animation style, but it matches the first one, and it's unique, and it's bright and colorful. And I think they did a good job with it. It achieved what they were trying to. But the level of detail that every scene had not just in the facial expressions and the movement of our main characters, but the background yeah. has so much detail. Every character in the background has facial expressions and detail, and they're all changing. And in scenes where we get hundreds of Spider-Men, they all are detailed out and live up to the expectation that their comic deserves. And special shout out to Spider-Punk, obviously. Look yeah. great. And you could tell they spent a lot of time with that model specifically. And I just thought it was impressive that there was such fluidity, like I said, to the background characters. And then I thought the score was good. I thought the writing and the plot was good. Wasn't a huge fan of the main villain, uh, but I can see they're setting up for something more. And I'm just really excited to see the sequel. Really great movie. Great pick, Josh. Big fan of that movie. Um, I think I accidentally said uh, series, but um, my uh, 2023 list is just animation in general, so it is like movies as well. So, the, so this didn't make my list just because of that rule. But do I really need to tell you? Across the Spider Verse was was good. You all saw it. I saw all the memes. Come on. Yeah, come on. Great, great movie. Ah. Josh, man. Oh, wait, no, wait. I skipped myself. All right. <laughs> yeah, let's let's make sure the the host is, is is given his fair share here. Sorry, I just got I just got excited. Uh, my fifth favorite thing of two thousand twenty three 
is also a movie. Um, it is May December. Uh, Hell yeah! Just watched this... it yesterday. Oh man, this movie is. At first, I was like, I don't, I don't know about this. Like, I don't, I don't know if credit if I'm with critics on on this one. At first, mm-hmm. the cinematography is like really bad. Um, I. I'm not really in love with it. And I could see why it is the way it is. Um, but I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this. We got a guy from Riverdale. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> um, but I was blown away at how intense, but also funny this movie is. I wasn't expecting it to be funny. Um, it's. Um, I didn't really know about what's this based on. Of I know it's inspired by a, tr- a true story. Um, yeah, like this this movie, like Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore, and even uh, Charles Melton, the guy Riverdale, like f- some phenomenal performances from all three of them. Um, and what I really appreciate about the, the movie is um, it. I mean, I don't. I don't. I definitely can't like obviously like fully relate to like any of these like characters but i I, it did have me reflect on certain things um in my past of like oh this is how it could have been if it it went that way um just to kind of mention that a little bit more so i don't sound like a a weirdo i also had um a crush on like a teacher back in middle school and i can see how like reflecting on the the charles mountain character i can see how that how that puts them in a difficult position how that could be like uncomfortable um and that doesn't have me like forgive because i don't really love like mainly what like a lot of these people do especially like julian Moore, and like i don't know but i think what's cool about like really interesting what the movie does is it always like flips back to another character like they seem to be in the wrong and then it gives you like a different perspective so it's definitely like one of those like multiple watches to get different takes takes on it and uh yeah it's been a, a very much uh uh, a thinking, a thinking movie for the past uh, couple weeks since I've I've seen it. I've just uh, really enjoyed the movie, um, and you know, like most art, uh, the good and the bad. I like that it helps me reflect on uh, emotions I just never p- thought about uh, in, until now in my uh, past and such. So yeah, just r- really good movie, um, and I I hope. Uh, I think I don't know if uh, how well they're going to do in Oscars and that who cares about Oscars, whatever. But I don't know. I hope at least they get some rewards, at least the performances. I think they all do a a great job. So, yeah. Uh, Moving on. Josh, man, kick it back to you. What is your fourth favorite thing of 2023? Well, I just I do want to say real quick, uh, I very much would have had May December on on um, at least close to my list. I did just watch it yesterday, so I didn't want like you know f- extremely fresh you know things on on the list. Mm. Um, but I, I I definitely agree with everything you had to you had to say about it. And I wanted to say that ending is probably the best ending of the year. I'm yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it a buck. That that ending is uh is 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 definitely a highlight of 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 the whole year in my opinion. Um, can you guys still hear me? I can. Okay, just making sure that you kind of like cut out for a second. Um, so my number four pick is another movie that I, ever since seeing, um, with you actually, Quinn. Oh, I could. Bo's not... first. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that might be an honorable pick for the worst films of the year, but that's a yeah. that's a different different conversation. Um, is a movie that just meant the world to me as a horror fan. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Oh yeah. It is talk to me. All right. I so we had an Evil Dead movie come out this year as well. Mm. And I don't want to compare Evil Dead and Talk to Me too much, but all I'll say is that Evil Dead 
has an appeal to it based on the fact that it's an extremely fun take on possession and just like, you know, these more uh, gory elements, right? Mm -hmm. I think what Talk to Me really brought to the table was a fresh version of that. Um, not necessarily taking, you know, straight straight from Evil Dead or anything. It's definitely doing its own thing. And I think that that all that creativity and, and originality needs to be celebrated. But this movie just bangs, man. It It's not perfect. There are things about it that, like, you know, on a second watch that I was like, you know, kind of like, okay, this is, you know, maybe not needed or whatever. But when you take it from the standpoint that it's a first time directing, uh, you know, uh, effort from a from a YouTuber and the level of which it came out already as a first film, man, the excitement I have on the next thing that the Rocker Rocker Brothers do is un ungodly amounts i i'm super hyped for whatever they do next i know that they're going to do a talk to me too uh super excited for that but just anything they're attached to i'm i'm on board because they clearly know how to make something that is fulfilling satisfying a thrill ride and just really doing new interesting things within the horror genre i i can't stress that enough like this movie just fucking hits man and I think the fact that it's it, it has the backdrop of Australia and kind of, you know, there's not enough movies made in Australia. Let's let's be honest. Yeah. Especially hits. And I think I think that that definitely deserves some 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 praise and and, and acclaim for that alone, because it, it's just it's just a cool backdrop. It, it's it's nice to have a different kind of setting for once. And just all of the first time like actors that are in it just fucking killed it. I, um you know, I, I do think. Like I said, it's it's not perfect, but what's there is just so damn good. And like movies like Talk to Me, when you see them, there's a kind of a vision of how you want everything to wrap up. And I think when a movie does that and it kind of lands the way that you expect it to, but also on like like doubles down on it in a way you're like, oh shit, this is you know even doper than I could have imagined it to be. I think endings like that deserve a really special uh, place in and 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 my heart uh, specifically, and I think this movie just left me with just such a grin on my on my face afterward. I'm like, yeah, that's that's how you end a fucking movie, and yeah, I just had such a great time. I think they the the Rocker Rocker Brothers just absolutely nailed this this movie, and yeah, I I I can't it is my favorite horror film of this year. It might be my favorite horror film of the last ten years. Um, it it just it's just something that I think I can endlessly rewatch, and I just have to give it a, a very high high position within the list because I had such a good time with it. Great pick, Josh. Really good movie. Something I did want to shout out um, real quick is uh, you did mention the the actors. I'm also excited to see where uh, the lead uh, Sophie Wildey goes. Uh, Absolutely, as well, because she has a very difficult performance in this movie. Um, and I just think she knocks it out of the park for being an actress. Uh, I've never seen before, before, uh, uh, talk to me. So I'm, I'm really also, I'm also excited to see where her career now goes because the movie did really well, uh, which shows that, you know, this and with barbarian the previous year as what, well, uh, 2022 as well is people want new horror. So I think it's really cool to see, uh how that's gonna gonna change yeah great pick uh josh eb what is your fourth favorite thing of 2023 all right next on the list we're going back to music and i'm gonna right. put the song strangers by nickel creek on my list Woo! and the reason is that it got me back into bluegrass and folk music Ooh. nickel creek is a bluegrass band and I think this song is a masterpiece from the start to the end. Uh, the first two lines are, it's been too long, stranger, guess even hard times fly. And they take these sort of two main lyrics, and I think that sets the tone for the whole song. They have super tight harmonies, and their voices blend very well with their instruments. And they use all of those things to set the mood of, we're strangers, we haven't talked in a while, it's been a long time. We don't really know what to talk about. So we'll talk about the weather. 
but I'm excited to see you and talk to you again. And the lyrics are really simple the whole time, but it is a beautiful song. If you haven't listened to it, I recommend it. And this song, when I heard it, like I said, got me back into bluegrass and folk, which I would say in 2022, I didn't listen to very much of, but this year, just the string instruments and the way they use their voices, it's an incredible track. Good pick, Josh. All right. I also have uh, a folk album on, on my list for music for my number four, and that's Kara Jackson's Why Does the Earth Give Us of nice. I, Oh my gosh, this album is just it it was on uh my birthday tourney and I still listen to it. I I love it so much. It's just so good. Um like just the the melodies, her her vocal performances, the like the the writing, it's like sad, but it's also got uh some comedy in it too and um yeah just a a really a really great listen um so much to get from each uh listen um i and to be a new artist as well um just really impressive i'm i'm really like chomping at the bit to see like what is her like next album or ep or whatever her next project is going to be because i just need more care jackson in my life uh yeah just a, just a great great album to start off off with their career yeah love it uh yeah josh ben what is your third favorite thing of 2023 so this is this is really difficult guys and i, and I want you to, to understand because so I have two more albums uh, to, that I'm going to be talking about on my list. And I really struggled to figure out which album was going to take the top spot. And I still, <laughs> I still am like kind of contemplating, but I just, the album I'm about to speak about is so important to me. And both of these albums I'll, I'll speak about are so important to me, but this I annoyed the fuck out of Quinn about this album because I so desperately <laughs> needed someone to 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 just understand like how beautiful and incredible the new Suzanne uh, uh, Sonfer album is. Blami, it it is one of the most beautiful pieces of music I've ever listened to in my life. I knew from two songs in that it was going to be an album of my life contender like seriously um it means so much to me and i i there's no words that i can really even use to describe how great it is i just want to read an antidote um from from uh, the uh, the artist her, herself it's just a very quick kind of saying about what this album is cuz i i think it just it like encompasses or encompasses everything that I could possibly say about it. And that is, I want this album to be an antidote to the darkness that dominates our cultural, our culture to our culture today. I want to show that there's another way to see reality. If one dares to take the leap of hoping for a more beautiful world. That is exactly what this album makes me feel. It renews my spirit. It makes me feel hope. It gives me inspiration to live it is such an important piece of music in my life. And though I, for some reason, because there's such a fantastic album uh, that I'm also going to talk about, it doesn't hit that top sp spot for me just on replay and lis listenability. It, it just means so much to me. I cannot recommend this album enough. If you guys have not listened to Su Suzanne Sonfer's Blami, um, it is most of it is spoken in a language you won't understand and that's intentionally which is old norse which is just super dope by the way just the fact that there's this amazingly beautiful poetic album that's also in old norse is just super dope um but it's okay because you don't need to understand every single word for you to feel how beautiful and how important this album is 
Um, and I hope that it changes someone's life just like it did for me. Great pick, Josh. Josh Eby, what is your third favorite thing of 2023? My number three is actually a book. I know we don't speak a lot about books on this channel, but Ooh, oh yeah, it is a book. It's called In Memoriam, and it was written by Alice Wynn. It's her first novel, and it takes place during World War I. And it's a romance, which is surprising it's on this list because I don't read a lot of romance books. But it's a romance between two male soldiers in World War I. And the reason that this book really captivated me is it wasn't trying to be profound, and yet it was. I think a lot of media just tries really hard to be profound in every sentence or every lyric or every scene. But this simply was just throughout the different scenes and chapters like silently profound in a way. I think it struck me, I've never read a story like this or seen a piece of media like this. You know, normally the man goes off to war and it's a romance between him and his wife who's back home. And they're going through very different experiences and then they get back together and try to make it work or one of them dies. But in this book, they go to war together in a time when, you know, gay marriage, let alone being gay, is a crime. And so they have that internal struggle, but they're also going through one of the most horrific events in human history, and that's a world war. And I just think it was beautifully written, and I would recommend it to anyone. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, my next pick is for my third favorite thing of 2023 is past lives uh i Woo! just uh, just i just love this movie um i guess a negative you could say maybe it is just too perfect of a movie i don't know if that's uh, a negative but i don't know i just really can't think of something i dislike about the movie it's just ah uh, it's it's tragic it's awkward it uh, just the performances are so well done by the the whole cast. Um, I appreciate the director for telling, uh, you know, sharing their story. Uh, you know, first time director as well. I think what I think what I appreciate as well with that being, you know, her being a fir first time director, the director of this. Actually, I'm blanking on. Her name, I'm actually going to look up her name real quick just because I want to show her all the respect. Um, but going off of what I, was, what I was saying, um, I think um, I'm really enjoying like this renaissance of like first time directors. Like, um, Josh, man, I know you saw this movie, but um, um, Cecily Song is the director I'm thinking of. Yeah, she's, I I'm excited to see what she sees uh, next or makes next but um but um I'm, I'm liking this renaissance of new time directors um in 2022 we had um wow i'm blanking on the movie i'm just blanking today um whatchamacallit um josh what's the movie with paul mesco uh after sun going through a divorce after sun um yeah i think he's I'm really liking this renaissance of like just these great movies with just that don't have a huge budget that are just, you know, romance and drama. And, you know, they just, the filmmaking's not like anything crazy, but it still does look beautiful. Uh, and just having them share their stories with us. Um, After Some was also a first time director. So, um, I'm excited to see what 2024 gives us. Um, if I'm being honest, past lives have stuck with me for so long as well, not just because I'm, I'm a big romance fan. Um, uh, but I honestly was debating giving up movies. Um, honest, like people really praise 2023. And I do think it got better once we got, like, uh, after the strike. I think the the back half was really good. 
once I could finally go back to the theater. But um, this, everything before that, honestly, I watched a ton of dog shit. Like some of the worst <laughs> things I've seen. Like yeah, shout out to sixty four. Yeah, so oh my god, sixty four. 65 oh 65 uh, what a what a fucking terrible movie <laughs> so many awful action blockbuster movies um like the the comedy like just so many bad movies right um, i'm like man i don't know if this year is a good year um but when this when i saw this movie i just stopped before for a while before driving back home and just thought about wow that's the power of there are other movies i really enjoyed as well um like i really enjoyed poor things and a lot of other movies but mm-hmm. um th- this movie just takes the cake for me like it's in my top five favorite movies of all time just for not only being just a great movie on its own but also just saving movies for me so yeah, really appreciative of past lives. Um, but I will stop my rant and we will go back to Josh. Man, what is your second favorite thing of 2023? Yeah, I just want to say, um, as someone who has also watched past lives, just I think I, I agreed with everything you said. Uh, just an absolutely fantastic pick. The only reason it's not on my list is because I knew you were going to have it on yours. Um, and I didn't want to be too redundant with it. Um, but yeah, I please people go go see past lives that that movie is is really important so here it is my favorite album of the year and i want to say it's not even close but obviously it was very close with with blami but at the end of the day i i cannot i can't lie to myself the last sampha album Mm. baha'i is so fucking good it is so to the brim packed with amazing songwriting fantastic electrical production amazing vocal melodies and harmonies and such beautiful control and immersion in this world that Sanfa has created it's been six years since the last Sanfa album i think it got to a point where unlike frank ocean where there was even hints of him possibly coming out again Sanfa didn't have any hints there was the occasional feature um i remember as soon as um mr morale and the big steppers came out and i saw that Sanfa feature uh listed on it i was like holy fuck does this does this mean does this mean something and it did and this album fucking delivered a thousand times over for me personally personally um my favorite song of the year is suspended off this album it oh my god there's i've been drinking all it, my love and it, it's so difficult cuz you they, i can also put spirit 2.0 i can put dancing circles in that same conversation i can put can't go back it only like there's just so many great songs in this album um i absolutely love the poetic metaphor of jonathan l seagull's novel being utilized throughout the whole album and and telling the story of that i love its deep exploration of the search for perfection and finding yourself in the peaceful moments of quiet and also as um sampa has become a father and putting that in i mean there's holy shit there's very few things that can make me cry as much as the first time i've listened to evidence which is just a beautiful lament or um not, not lament uh just just a beautiful song for uh for for you know talking about just what having a child has done for sampha in his spiritual and his physical journey in this world and I think he's connected he connects it so well to the audience and and the listener that it, it it's almost it's almost too personal. It's almost too beautiful. Um, but yeah, man, there's just nothing else I can say about this album. It is from the top to the bottom packed with bangers, amazing songs, and just absolutely fantastic production. Um, it is my favorite album of the year. I 
like I said, went back and forth between this and Blami. But if I'm being honest, I listened to the Sanfa album way more in comparison. Um, I checked the charts and and just saw that it was my most listened to album of the year. So it uh, it, it it deserves this spot full heartedly. Great pick, Josh. Yeah, big fan of this album. Uh, Josh Eby, what is your second favorite thing of 2023? All right, my number two is an artist. Snail's House oh. is my favorite artist of 2023. Ooh. And Spotify Wrapped would agree, by far my most listened to <laughs> artist of 2023. Hell yeah. He is a electronic producer, so there's sometimes lyrics, but most of the time there's no lyrics to his music. And he creates a dreamy, almost nostalgic, reminiscent of 8-bit video game music Uh tracks and i would say that each one is more about the atmosphere it creates and the feelings that it invokes and i think that's why i enjoy it so much because i can listen to it when i'm at the gym but i can also listen to it while i'm chilling with the lights off there's just a super wide variety to the type of music whether it's upbeat and pump like at the gym or just trying to chill after a long day and I think that breadth is pretty impressive with electronic music. You know, I'd say most people either fit into the super pump dance tracks or they're more lo-fi chill. And I just enjoy it. And I think that I normally listen to music with lyrics because I kind of get bored when music doesn't have lyrics. Unless it's, you know, super intricate, classical, I can enjoy that. But this just always keeps me entranced. And so I would recommend Snail's House. Heck yeah. My second favorite thing in 2023, it was tough because the shows in particular uh, were really difficult because there were a lot of last seasons and a lot of sequel seasons. Um, You know, I watched all of Succession for the first time this year and, you know, really in enjoyed it but that didn't make it um i barry's final season was really good as well i i enjoyed it and it it was really close but it it didn't make the list but the bear season two is just on another level yeah um i for i already enjoyed the first season quite quite a bit um Mm. i watched it i don't mean to brag but i watched it before the hype um it's true got me so, on the hype uh <laughs> but um yeah i i just am impressed like what it, it does what a second season should do it it does everything that i i that we needed to build up to uh with the first season we have every every character in the show they have their own episode where we get to know more about them and we get to see their all their growth but we also you know it still is about you know Carmi's journey as well and we have what I really love that that they did um, is they took because with season one it was still so stressful and it wasn't that stressful in the beginning for a while you know with um everything being a little lighter but then that finale being just so stressful with carmy in the freight the oh, freezer so good. uh and like pe- panicking and he breaks up with um his girlfriend as he's like in the freezer didn't mean it uh and like having to and i think like why it's, it makes my list not only for you know just all of the characters like really shining this uh season but um Also, just the message of this particular season with debating on, I think, anyone that's creative or owns a business or just has to make that decision of, like, what is really important and, like, is it to, like, the balancing of, like, your passion, like, your career, of what, like, what it is you want to do in this world or finding those connections, finding love. And I, it's been something that I've related to for like being in, you know, most of my twenties being single and 
trying to create not like in a creative sense but shining a light to like pieces of art just like this that really impacts me a lot um yeah just a really phenomenal show um like shout out to the the director the the team like they filmed this immediately after they were uh the season one came out too and like doing that uh before even like doing that in such a a crunch time um but still delivering on even a better season um just what a phenomenal show um if you haven't seen the bear go on hulu give it a give it a watch um it's it, it's so good i'm just really excited to see where all these seeing all these actors too in other movies and such as well has been really exciting so i'm excited to see where this team goes further but uh josh man kicking it back to you what is your favorite thing of 2023 so i i i, I once again i have to have to just say yes chef um to to the bear season two because yeah you you absolutely beautifully put that um just a, such a great show um and you know again shout outs to succession shout outs to barry you know also you know great great seasons um but just i i fully i do agree with you. i think the say again uh, i was just sharing some other shows shout out to full yep. circle shout out to beef yep absolutely uh, fan, fan, fantastic shows and i really was close to putting a show on on my list but again i kind of kind of knew you would you would you would you'd come through with the with the show of the year so i felt like i didn't need to my pick and this is going to get very personal and, and 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 very deep so bear with me guys is this was the year that i finally made stuff and when i say that i don't mean just making things for the sake of making things this was the first year that i put my foot forward and am really trying to learn how to create things in a way that is going to not only help me on a career sense or you know get me out of you know the position that i am but really make something that I make things that I get to feel genuine joy and passion in doing. I technically began a filmmaking journey a few years ago when me and my friend made a um, film called Righteous Confession. And honestly, it was a really bad time. I was very much caught in a perfectionist mindset I was very controlling. I was very just just not pleasant to be around. And I had this like vision in my head that like if it wasn't done in that this specific way, that that it was all failure and that it wasn't worth doing. And when you watch the film, as much as I'm very proud of it existing as a a moment in time and, and a moment to show where where I was and even the stepping stone that it that it also is in, in my life as as well, you can clearly see that seep through the the film. And then I made something more intimate and and downscale with a um this this little Spider Man uh, Peter Parker fan film called No More, that was just kind of this thing that I've wanted to do for a while, which was kind of create a character moment, um you know not focusing on Spider Man's powers and you know all the stuff that we couldn't do from a logistical standpoint but just the characterization of 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 peter parker and just kind of discussing what it felt like to have the expectations and you know quote unquote responsibility that comes along with that um in a way that you know connected with me as 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 the writer and you know i got i got to to kind of do that as 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 a project and you know that one felt a lot more genuine and purposeful and whatever whatever but this year, this summer, I made nothing personal. And that is a film that uh, your, your, your host of the show is actually in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a cameo appearance, if you haven't seen. But that is a film mm. where everything 
finally came to a head and I felt able to finally let go of the the elements of myself that have kind of held me back from a perfectionist mindset to just being over controlling to, to these and that obviously it's still things I was working through in the process, but this was the first time I was really able to let those things go and make something that I'm extremely proud of. Um, there's no part of the nothing personal experience that I had this year that made me feel like it was a step back in any way. It was all a step forward and it taught me so many things. It showed me so many things. It was so fun to make and experience. And I had such an honor being able to, to just create this thing that a lot of people were able to connect with and, and see. And, you know, even the, 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 you know, the views that, that we have on it, though, I don't really, you know, consider views to be the, the be all end all thing. It just meant the world to me that a lot of people like actually gave it, gave it a shot and, 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 you know, was was able to 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 just you know see see this thing that we spent the summer making, and I I just am extremely thankful for for anyone out there that that has seen it or will see it and 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 all that. And it was just an extremely important moment in my life. But I say make things in general because it's a two part, and and I, and I don't I don't want to take too much time. But the second part of this whole thing was this is the this is the year where I was finally able to take music that I've been making and perform it live. Um, and even more, more recently, uh, literally as the last thing I did this year, make money doing so, um, showing, you know, some sort of financial gain, you know, obviously money isn't, isn't important when it comes to the art and stuff, but it does definitely give you a sense of, um, you know, purpose and feeling like, like this stuff is, is, amounting to something when you're able to actually see some kind of monetary income from it and this is a process i've spent about five years trying to get myself mentally conditioned to being able to do because i've thrown literally away hundreds of songs because i felt like they were shit because i felt like they weren't worth anything and i've genuinely have had suicidal inclinations based off of just trying to make music and failing and getting so caught in my head and just thinking that it was hopeless and that I would never be able to do anything. But after all these years, I was able to do two shows at the end of the year that showed me that not only is hard work and dedication and belief in yourself so important and can literally beat any odds or anything that stands in front of you but to experience the sense of being on stage again as I, I used to be on stage in, in high school and stuff it was it was just such a magical moment and i i truly do i truly have felt more this year because of those two things a sense of purpose a sense of joy a sense of content and a sense of understanding within myself and you know a real sense of progress as a, as a human being and, and i hope to only continue that into this this next year and only build upon these foundations but yeah this year was an extremely important year for me and um i just want to thank anyone um that either checked out my music or the film or at the bare minimum has just listened to me go on this rant because this this was this was truly something that 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 meant the world to me and you know i'm i'm so thankful for for quinn to to be able to even give me the opportunity to to speak on this stuff and to to to, to have this amazing session with the other josh as well where we are able to to share and, and and recommend you stuff that really matters because i believe art really does matter especially in you know this world that we live now where it's so easy to get caught up in the doom and gloom of of everything and i think art is the perfect escape it's the perfect thing that allows us to to connect and find ourselves within the the darkness and you know i just want to say i'm extremely thankful for you know quinn's friendship i'm extremely thankful for josh's friendship and i'm extremely thankful for the opportunities that were given to me this year thank you absolutely and well done great uh great pick for sure um 
yeah, I'll uh, I'll link I'll link his uh, stuff in the in the description then. But yeah, definitely he had, he had a he had a good year. Go check out his his stuff. Um, you might also hear a familiar face and nothing personal as well. You might hear Josh Eby's voice maybe Ooh. as as a character. But uh, but uh, yeah, speaking of Josh Eby, Josh Eby, what is your favorite thing of 2023? Well, let me tell you, that's kind of hard to follow up, but <laughs> I do just want to say I'm proud of you, Josh. You've always been the the idea man, the dreamer, but to see you make something concrete is really cool. And not just something throwaway where you're like, I've got to get something out there, but something you put time and effort and the quality shows. But my number Appreciate one show that. of this year has to be Blue Eye Samurai. And this oh, animated ooh. show snuck it in under the wire. And it's, yeah. I promise it's not recency bias. This show is incredible. It is a French-American action set in the Edo period in Japan. And it is a historical drama that they can obviously did a lot of research in. I'm no expert in Japanese history during the samurai age, but it seems like there's a lot of historical accuracy. <laughs> but they take it and they put a modern, a modern twist on it, a modern sense or point of view and there's commentary about racism there's con commentary about gender inequalities and transgenderism and all of this is wrapped up in an amazing action piece the plot is incredible episode five specifically is my favorite episode in the show without not going to say not going to spoil it but i was just impressed from the very beginning to the end that an American or French American animated show has the prowess that I would expect an anime to have. And I think I've been talking to various people about this for a while. You know, I'm hoping that the rise of popularity of anime in the West will bring about this sort of renaissance in Western animation. And I think this show is potentially the first of many that just hits the nail on the head is beautifully filmed in terms of, I guess, directed, I should say, and animated. And the voice acting is also really good, which is something that I would say Western shows sometimes are lacking on. Although, you know, Quentin's show here is a testament to how much better things are getting in that sense. Um, we talk about a lot of great shows on here, but I'm just really excited for 2024 with this show sort of wrapping out 2023. Hell yeah. Have you guys seen it? Josh, yeah, I have planned on seeing it. So my process of it was I wasn't going to see it ju just because I didn't really love that it was a revenge story. I was like, eh, I don't, I don't know if I really want to do it. You know, I just finished Vinland Saga season two recently. You know, I have no enemies, so I don't really feel like I need to see any more revenge. Stories. <laughs> right, right. But, but you just, you just convinced me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it. Uh, Absolutely. Same here soon. Uh, I, I was, I, I was shocked. Like, I wasn't expecting that to be your number one. I don't know what your number one was gonna be, but I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. We love it. We right. love it over here. Yeah, well, once you watch it, we'll have to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. My favorite thing of 2023, it's, it's Chia Furu. It's just that watching this show and uh, just being blown away on, you know, not just the, the animation. I mean, the animation is beautiful. Um, but just like how layered all these characters are initially, I'm like, ah, here we go. Okay. Here's some, some tropes of, you know, we got the fat kid and the nerdy kid and the, the popular kid. Um, but no, they, they went above those tropes. Um, I also just appreciate, you know, I think in a lot of, not a lot, but like you, anime. It's very, it's, it's very like half and half with. A care. I just like seeing characters. Just sometimes they they just are insecure, 
and maybe not, you know, just a blank slate of they're just always they're either depression, a pervert or really optimistic. I, I like that a, a character, the characters in this are they have their insecurities um, and they have their, you know, they, they are positive, but they do have their flaws and uh, they just feel like real people other then, like, I, I don't want to keep crapping on, like, Shonen protagonists and um, S- Sane and protagonists as well. But it's, it's just nice to see, like, just some some layered characters from a show that uh, is pretty forgotten. <laughs> um, and I know the manga, it, it's probably never going to get um an english translation translation um in like physical physical media i know it's uh online you can get it um but regardless i'm gonna support this thing as much as i can um and continue to rewatch and get thoughts on it um and read it as well because it doesn't uh the three seasons that are out don't adapt all of the manga um, I, I just, I, it, it really just hit me the power of like, of connection of like, not only like having what I really enjoy about, you know, competition, stuff like that. What I enjoy from the Shonen anime, what I enjoy from the sports stuff with having like those characters that are, are good at it, characters that aren't good at it, wanting to be, but also, um, you know, just having all these characters love something that's just so like even loving chair fewer feels like um an almost obscure thing as well i know it's um talked about from other uh youtubers and such as well so it's not like i wouldn't say it's like obscure obscure but yeah i just it it's it's in contention of just being my favorite piece of art i just it just really hit me um I, I need some more time with it to to make that decision but yeah, i just love everything about this show I, I just think it's it's a masterpiece um and i just think it's on crunchyroll um i don't know it's probably other places maybe i don't know uh there's three seasons of it give it a watch uh you can watch your you can read all the the volumes on uh, like Kindle and Amazon stuff like that, but it's only digital. You can't get a physical. Um, if you speak Japanese, if you can read and speak Japanese, that's not going to be a problem for you. You can read all the physical <laughs> media, but yeah, just just watch the eye through. It's just such a incredible series that uh, yeah, I just can't say enough nice things about it. Uh, it just. I, I like that defined the year 2023 for me was uh, this show. Hell yeah. Yeah. That is it for us. Does anyone want to mention any honorable mentions before uh, we get on out here? Uh, I really enjoyed John Wick four. <laughs> oh, okay. thought, thought it was just a really, really good action film. Also, if you're just talking action extraction two is, has some great action too and uh i gotta gotta shift shout out extraction too <laughs> okay it's not on my list because you don't need me to tell you that oppenheimer was really good that was uh, incredible i love that movie hell yeah yeah oppenheimer's good I, 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 I will not stand against oppenheimer it, it didn't make my list neither did barbie but i i definitely i definitely respect them from a cultural standpoint and especially oppenheimer for 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 uh, for for the filmmaking aspect of it, I I do think it's it's an extremely well made film. Yeah, it didn't make my list either, but just had to shout it out. So well made, well written. Oh yeah, the dialogue was incredible. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just gonna give a shout out to this is somewhat somewhat recently, but I'm just gonna give a shout out to the Iron Claw. Just go see it. Yeah, it's re- it was a really Ooh. good uh, really good drama. Uh, Jeremy Allen White's in it as well, you know, from the Bear. So yeah, there you go. I'll, I'll just, I'll just shout, I'll just shout that one out. I know it's doing pretty well in, in theaters, but 
I don't know. I just, yeah, I just enjoyed. That was a recent one I, I, I watched that I really enjoyed. So, um, so I didn't include this. Um, this this will be the last thing I say. I didn't include this because it technically is isn't over till this week. Um, but my like my one of depending on how the rest of the year turns out, I I do believe the curse is probably going to be my number one thing at the end of this year. I could not say enough amazing things about it. It every episode is absolutely fantastic. The performances are spectacular the filmmaking is fantastic it is so creative it's unique it has a purpose it has something to say um there's no show like it please for the love of god everyone out there watch the curse i know it's on showtime so that's not convenient for people but if if you can get just a free trial for a week and then just go through the episodes it finishes this friday please for the love of god watch this show it deserves all of the love and appreciation that's gotten so far. And it still feels like it's a, uh, an underground cult thing. So I'm, I'm trying to trying to give it its, its, its flowers. It's most likely going to be my favorite thing of the year, probably by a fair bit. So we'll, we'll see how, how 2024 turns out. Thank you. All right. That is it for, for us. Uh, thank you to both the Josh's for joining me and sharing uh, our uh, our loves of the, the last year reflecting on um not, not a great year for the world but um <laughs> but uh you know it, the media was at least good and hopefully uh 24 can be better yeah it was an honor man it was an absolute honor yeah thanks for having me on looking forward to talking about this a year from now what happened in 2024 hell yeah <laughs> hell yeah absolutely we will see you all next time stay tuned for uh, the best animation of 2023.